Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden and this video is going to go over two reasons and really important reasons why perhaps you shouldn't water your vegetables as much. Now of course it is important that our plants get water otherwise they're not going to grow at all and often water is what they need to grow nice and healthy. But there comes a point where you have a complete routine watering system where your plants get pampered a bit much. And there's actually a couple of negatives to plants being pampered. And in this video, I'm gonna show you two reasons as well as how to apply these reasons for you to water your vegetables less to get better results. So stay tuned. As I just mentioned, there are a couple of drawbacks to pampering your plants. And of course, it's fine to love them and look after them loads, but you don't want to do it too much because it weakens them. And what you want, especially if you're growing plants outside, is for them to build up a little bit of resilience. So if the climate turns a bit funny, the weather changes or it gets really windy, you want to make sure that they can hold up and withstand that rather than if they've been pampered too much suffer the consequences and get damaged. Before I go into watering, I just want to give you one quick tip that's very much related to building up resilient plants. And that is where possible to actually sow seeds direct into the ground, into their final growing spaces. I've got spinach, radish and another row of spinach here that I have sown direct. And there's a key benefit of sowing direct, which I mean, there's so much popularity about module growing, for example, these Kailan kale, but there's an issue uh, with module growing is that this one here has been pulled out by something and I've tried to put it in. But when you transplant a module, the roots aren't actually very strong and it's easy for a bird to come and pull them out. However, if you sow things direct, they're going to root into the soil that they're growing. And that means it becomes a lot tougher for them to be pulled out. And it also means that they have exposure to wind because the issue of growing under cover is they then come out, maybe you've done some hardening off, but then when you plant them out, they have to fight against wind and they're not as strong on the stems. However, if they're grown acclimatized to wind, then they're gonna have stronger stems. And with that, they're gonna be stronger plants. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love growing in modules, but all I'm saying is try not to rule out sowing direct if there is an opportunity and it's the right time of year. Of course, use modules to extend the season and make the most of succession planting, but try and use direct sowing where this isn't necessary. But you don't just have to rely on sowing direct to create more resilient plants. In fact, there's a much more effective method and that is by purposefully stressing plants by giving them a lack of water over a fairly short period of time. And just before I go through all of the different vegetable groups and my recommendations for stressing them just so they can grow stronger roots, I'm just gonna go over how exactly that works. If plants are watered frequently and on a routine basis, they settle for shallower roots. And there are two key drawbacks of this. The first is that shallow roots means that if a drought is to happen, they're more likely to wilt or perhaps run to seed because they can't access water from further down. And the second one is that it weakens a plant during windy weather. Here I'm next to the broad beans and these are prone to wind damage. So you've got to make sure that they have quite a good root system. So what you want to do is to break out of that routine of a regular water fairly early on in the plant's growth and development stage. The reason why is that you want to give them a chance to encourage their roots to go downwards because as I said before, if the water is always going to be close to the surface, then there's no need for them to grow downwards. But by taking away water um, for a set period of time, it's going to force them to send roots downwards searching. And that isn't just going to mean that they can get more access to water, but they have more access to nutrients and also they're going to be stronger when it comes to wind. But there's one group of plants or of crops where this shouldn't be applied. And that group is your leafy greens. For example, lettuce and chard and spinach. 
The reason why is because leafy greens, if they do run into drought-like conditions, they can very quickly run to seed. So I don't recommend that you reduce the watering for these to stress them to encourage stronger roots. They're so easy to grow, they have a quick turnaround anyway, it just isn't necessary. So how do you apply this principle um, for your legumes such as your peas and beans? How do you stress them to make them a bit more resilient? What I'd recommend is to try and not water them for around five or six days, at least three weeks after transplanting them up until the signs of the first flower or when they're around 15 centimetres tall, anything like that. It's essential that you resume watering your legumes, for example, runner beans here, just before they flower, because if they don't have enough water, then they're really going to struggle to set fruit, and that's gonna be very damaging uh, for your productivity. But by stressing them earlier on in their growth stage, it's gonna make them producing fruit a lot easier because they've got that deeper, stronger root system that's going to allow them to bring up more minerals and vitamins and also water to help create nice plump fruit. The next group of vegetables are your root brassicas, for example, swede, which I have five rows here, and also your root vegetables, such as carrots and parsnips and beetroots. Now it's less essential for these because these are always going to be shallow rooting. However, any point after eight weeks of growth, leave them for maybe around five to six days without any water and then give them a nice well-deserved soaking afterwards. For tomatoes and you can also apply it to other fruiting vegetables such as peppers, what you want to do is as you transplant them give them a really deep watering there and then. Try and transplant them as deep as possible as well but then leave them for a week, don't give them any water for a week and that is really going to draw their roots down towards the water which was given when he gave them that deep water initially. And then you can resume to normal watering, whether it's two or three times a week. But the thing that's different with tomatoes compared to the other veg is right after transplanting, leave it a week and then resume. Now for potatoes, you usually plant these pretty deep if you're not following a no-dig method. For example, these ones I actually just planted uh, pretty deep, uh, around 25, 30 centimetres, and there's a lot of moisture going to be in there all of the time. So you don't have to encourage these as much. However, it's different for potatoes grown in containers. For potatoes grown in containers, you really want to make sure that they try and get as much of the space as possible uh, to crop. So what you should do when they're around 15 centimetres tall, so around five to six inches, don't water them for at least five or six days, just so they can really go down uh, to the base of the container. And then you can water them afterwards. This is a Shetland black potato uh, that I'm growing and I'm very excited and I'm hoping that I'll get a good crop from these. But there's one thing that I wanna say that's really important as you're doing this, as you're applying a bit of stress. If at any point as you're doing this, you see the plants beginning to wilt, then give them a water because the fact that they're beginning to wilt has already caused them a little bit of stress. So if you're getting kind of unprecedented, and I don't like that word, but unprecedented weather uh, that's really hot, then if it is wilting, give it a water and you've done that job. It's just something to bear in mind uh, so you don't take it too far and they all die. For squash and cucurbits, these are almost always going to be transplanted. And after transplanting, wait a couple of weeks for them to start producing some nice roots and then don't water them for around five or six days as well and then start watering them again and that's just really going to help them develop strong fruits and lots of flowers. For your alliums for example leeks and onions which I have grown here these are almost always going to be transplanted as well either from a seed bed or from modules. What you want to do is after transplanting them Wait around three weeks and then if you can have a period of four or five days of nice warm dry weather without any rain then that's going to be just fine. But you can leave it um, for another month and any time within that window of three weeks after transplanting and then the next four weeks any point in that window would be ideal. 
But for garlic, I wouldn't worry about it, mainly because you usually plant cloves in autumn and then they're overwintered and then they're going to be hardy anyway. So just wouldn't worry about it for garlic, but for your leeks and your spring onions and your onions, you can apply this principle. Now there is one other reason why you might want to water some of your crops less, especially fruiting crops in terms of tomatoes and peppers. But I'm just gonna focus on tomatoes here as I give these a water and you're like, what am I doing if I'm telling you to water less? Well, there's a method of growing tomatoes that is really quite fascinating. It's called dry grown tomatoes. And it's not tomatoes grown without any water because obviously that would be impossible. But it's a very clever technique um, that they use in usually pretty hot places like California where water is already scarce. So what they do is they will plant a tomato, they'll grow it as leggy as possible, plant it as deep as possible, then give it a really deep watering. And then they'll only water the plants whenever they threaten to wilt. And then by the time the first fruit, the first tomato fruit ripens, they then stop watering altogether. And what this does is, yes, it kind of reduces the yield, but by having less water, it actually intensifies the flavor of the tomatoes. So it makes them a lot sweeter. And this is just quite a fascinating thing to think about that we can apply in our undercover grain areas because being undercover, we don't have to worry about loads of rain, for example. So sometimes, when I do grow tomatoes, I do use uh, that method of um, dry tomatoes and it's just something uh, to consider. So again, the whole purpose is by giving as little water as possible, then when the first tomato ripens, stop watering altogether, let the others ripen. And usually by the time it comes to the third, fourth, fifth harvest, those tomatoes, they'll have less water, but the water kind of dilutes the flavor. So instead you're gonna have these beautiful tomatoes bursting with flavor. And that's just something that you can try very easily yourself. So those are two key reasons as to why you may want to water some of your crops less. The first is to create more resilient plants which are going to last changes in the weather and also some potential challenges and disasters they may come up against. And the second is just to intensify the flavor, especially for tomatoes. And don't worry about trying it with your whole crop, maybe just try it with two plants and compare it to the rest and see what happens. So if you have any questions about this, please do let me know down below in the comment section. And if you're looking for more content, check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Hugh Richards, where you get two exclusive videos a week and it costs less than three pounds a month. And finally, because this video was to do with a lack of water, I'm gonna recommend you check out my video all about watering. So you make sure that you're in check with the rest of the watering schedule after your plants have been lightly stressed. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye.